Hello guys, one of my recent hobbies and types of videos on this channel is just find some interesting code snippet and review it, both from showcasing some feature and also sharing my opinion on what could I improve in my opinion again. So today we're looking at an open source project called Servas, which is a bookmarking tool which looks like this and at a particularly one method which automatically tries to set the bookmark link title from the URL. And I have a few things to showcase and comment here. So we'll talk about static helper, validation, try catch, and PHP functions. So first, helper, what that is. So helper may be any class or any function in any place of your project. I know it sounds vague and not really helpful, but that's exactly what it is. You can create a class and put it, for example, in app helpers or in anywhere you want. In this case, namespaces app helpers. And then you can create methods that you would call from controllers, from jobs, from wherever. And if you don't want to register that anywhere or create the classes for that helpers, it may be as simple as creating static functions and then calling them by calling web page data, colon, colon, method name. And this is exactly what is done in controller, for example. So this is how it gets called. If the link title is empty, we will try to automatically set that and you just load that web page data on top in use section. So if you have some helper functions like this one, which doesn't really belong to any model, this is one way of registering that. Another thing I wanted to mention is that helper is used in multiple places. So on the right side on GitHub, you can see that it is used in the link controller in one place, in the API controller, and then also in regular web controller in two places. This is a good example of reusable code. So this is extracted into a helper. It could be a service class. It could be any other class, but the main thing that it is not in the controller, it is separated. And here, what I want to emphasize is that Laravel developers need to know some PHP because a lot of PHP functions do not require Laravel. So for example, validation of the URL, filter var and this constant is PHP syntax. And we use that for validating emails. I remember before any frameworks in PHP 5 or something. Also, another example of PHP knowledge is regular expression with preg match all. So how to extract the title from the HTML. The this is quite a useful knowledge to have. And also HTML entity decode is also a PHP function to extract the actual title from the matches from specific match in the HTML. So my overall point is read PHP documentation and PHP tutorials, not just Laravel. Now let's get into try catch and return. And here I'm not a big fan of this solution. So if something goes wrong in any place of that function, it just returns empty string, which means we failed at getting the title, then we just return the empty title and move on. But maybe we should inform someone about something. So what is missing here, in my opinion, is not return, but throw some kind of exception, which you can catch in rendering of exceptions in Laravel or maybe in the controller. And then for example, send a notification or email that this page is not successfully crawled. But in this case, in three places, return empty, return empty if there is no title and return empty on any exception of the HTTP request. And then also I would question the decision to get that HTTP request as a part of the URL. So again, how it is used in the controller. If the title is empty, then we are firing the HTTP request, which means that the user of the form needs to wait for a second or two while that request is processed. And in here in the store method of the controller of the ABI controller, I don't see any specific loading indicators or anything visual. So I guess that the user actually has to wait on the website on the page, or in fact, let's check the web controller for that get web page title. Yeah, so the whole store method looks like this, which means that the user potentially will wait for a second or two, which is not the best user experience. So what do we do in this case is probably put that into a queue and a job and then put that title later in the background. That's one way of doing that. And another way of doing that is in the form itself. For example, with live wire, you could do wire model live. And then while the whole form is being filled, we fire the request and get back with potential title in 
a few seconds while the form is still on the screen. So this solution requires both front-end and back-end. It doesn't necessarily have to be Livewire. It could be Vue.js or any other JavaScript framework. But from user experience, I would advise to not force the users to wait for HTTP external requests, especially if they are on slower internet connections. So yeah, these are the things I can comment on that function. What would you have done maybe differently? Maybe you disagree with some of my opinions. And the goal here was just to take a real code example from a real project and film kind of a reaction to it. So there's a popular YouTube kind of genre of someone reacts to something. So this is my reaction to this code snippet. And you can, of course, check out the full project service. I will link that in the description below. It's pretty popular with 300 stars. And you can see other parts of the code in that project. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.